So if a company doesn't provide training on an ongoing basis, if the only training they're, they're providing their employees is during that onboarding phase, why would that be, dis I mean, other than common sense, how could that be dis disadvantageous both to the company and to the individual working for the company? Well, let's put it into the old fitness category. Yep. Imagine someone joins a gym, goes for the first week, and then never goes again. How's that going to work out for them? Not well. Right. So training isn't something you did, it's something you do. And mm -hmm. if a company's doing it right, they do it on an ongoing basis. You know, they continually develop and, and, and train their staff to, you know, learn new things, develop new techniques. There's times change. It, uh, techniques change, like it's not something you do once and you're done. You do it over and over and over. So w the companies that do prioritize training and have training as a mandatory part of just their mission, what what do you think, I mean, what, what, dif what distinguishes them from the companies that aren't? What's the common denominator between the companies that are training on a consistent basis, that are prioritizing training, and they're actually investing the time and resources, the money into their team to, to facilitate the training? Number one, growth. Another, another one would be retention and then customer service. The, the longer your employees are employed at your organization, the higher the customer satisfaction. So it reduces turnover. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously the better your staff is trained, the better operations are. Less yeah. headaches, less liability, more productivity. You know, the, it's, it's so obvious right oh yeah so why do most companies not do it well they a lot of companies think they are mm -hmm. but they're not in other words to train people properly you need four key ingredients number one good content then you need repetition mm -hmm. then you need practice then you need accountability so when one of those are missing it would be like making a cake without the egg you know it still kind of comes out of the oven but it's not really a cake right so most companies that are training but they're not training effectively which is kind of ironic because what's the difference between training ineffectively and not training? There probably isn't one. There isn't, yeah. except for it's, you're spending money to try. <laughs> right, right. So it, you might as well not train if you're training ineffectively. But just ignorance, they, they, they don't realize that there's a better way of doing it. I'm still new to business, man. I mean, I'm still figuring it out just like everybody, but it just, it made sense to me. It's like, if you want to get better at something, you have to train. And that's personal, professional, that's in anything. And, you know, I want to, I mean, look, I want to win. I want to grow my business. And I know that in order to grow my business, I mean, like, we just let's re reverse engineer, like, what has to happen. I'm going to keep doing the things that I need to do. I'm going to keep putting in the time, the effort, the work, the commitment into developing myself and growing myself. But if my team isn't growing, then it gets to a point where there's a struggle. I mean, I, I, I'm growing, I leave them behind, I get to come back and pull them, you know, push them, whatever. That stressful, chaotic, unproductive. At the end of the day, if the only way for a company to grow is for the individuals to grow within it. So do you think that this is something that, you know, over the next like 10 years, more companies are going to draw an awareness to as far as how important it is to train and by not training, it basically is a liability and detriment to the future success or lack thereof of their company? Absolutely. I think um, if you don't train your employees, your customers will. Mm -hmm. And you don't want that. No, no, you don't.